three, two, one. It's at this moment. I am getting the strangest case of Dijon mustard right now. Mm. All right, so let's try oh, this case? again. <laughs> also, also, honey, you're not coming through on Discord. <laughs> oh my god, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm about to put my fist through this fucking screen. Honey? <laughs> Isn't it damaged enough already? Now what I go, what I went through for thirteen fucking years. So yes, Mildred, as you just said a minute ago, technology it loves to give us the middle finger. I am sorry for the audio botch, guys. Fucking computer reset again today. Oh, and uh, allow me to apologize for our last broadcast as well, where I never ca came in on the mic. So, uh, yeah, my computer decided it was going to reset while I was sleeping last night, reset all the fucking audio, and I thought I had all the settings back to where they needed to be. So, there's that. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Windows update kicked in. Kicked in. Well, not well, not to... All right, let me switch up this playlist. It is all right. Let's get the introductions once again out of the way. Of course, I'm John. Of course, they'll do the one card DM. Kira Coops, Lady K, Matty J, Nefanor Frawl, Slick Rick. There. This time I know I was heard. Yep. Um, as I was saying before, before technology screw screwed me over, I ended up dodging a bullet this week. But, oh, I ha but that particular thing is in the rear view mirror. It should. It will not. It will not create any new problems. And but it does. It did result in me deciding to accelerate plans for something I ha I had in my back pocket for a couple weeks. That being said, there will be a few shifting shifting abouts when um a little bit later on. But we will get to that when we get to it. So. Last time we left last time we left off we ended up having a situation of mission failed successfully <laughs> because the goal in in trying to head to the silver glades our crew ended up in the gullet of a leviathan and as luck would have it there happened to be a big crystal Surrounded, surrounded by a bunch of really, really angry flying fish. Within that, it within that particular um, gullet of that leviathan, and then midway through, a group of chasers decided to ambush us by blowing a hole in the damn thing. And 
unfortunately, they they forgot that the ship we were on had a cannon. And the leader of that little ambush went um well, he called a bad case. She called a bad case of explosions. Yeah. I'm trying to decide which death was more humiliating. That one, that one or, the, or guest the guest character on the on the on the, the live critical role, role where he literally died within minutes of his debut. In fairness to the man, he had the perfect run. Yeah. Got a nine, got a one, got a twenty, got disintegrated like like nothing. But yeah, uh, monk, I do have the notes from the last uh, session if you if you need them. Oh, that is that is much appreciated. And you're but... already shared in the folder, so. Mm -hmm. But the in the in the aftermath of that, figuring waste not want not, our crew. Stole the ship that had broken into the Leviathan. Used that to get back, just to see, the, just to just to see the place that they were trying to save, get cut off from the re from the rest of Adriel. Selfish, because higher ups corruption money bullshit. Yeah. Well, it's not like it was lampshaded already with the explosions a few weeks back. I know, but someone has to state the obvious. Now that be that being said, they were able to get they were able to to get the crystal replaced so that Gelspar did not fall into the mists. Because once you go down into that, you're not coming back. And the whole and shortly after that, especially after all of the rebuilding that Gelspar did since it was now cut off from the from the rest of Adriel due to that little stunt. Oh, Maddox had sent a thing had sent a note basically state, stating that even though the even though the mission technically was a failure, he considers it a success. And that he would be in he would be in touch. And that that was where we ended things last time. Now, moving that into now, it has been about, it has been about six about six months since that since that whole affair went down. Um, Gelspar is no is not fully recovered, but it's on the it's on the way there. What has certainly helped is a man named Rook showing up and basically becoming the de facto mayor of the city because. Rook is one of them, and he's, and he has that level of trust with the people of Gelspar. As, and Maddox is perfectly fine with it because, as far as he's concerned, if he were to take that role, people would see him as just a Adriel noble and would not trust him. However, Rook had. Had um had contacted you all, asking asking for a bit of, asking for a bit of help. In particular, with in particular with a with an it with an area that he that he had found called the flooded den, which seemed to be this area that the no that the nobility of of um. Of Andriel wanted to wanted to keep secret, and since Ken Kendrick is still f fighting for the city of Andriel, e not not Andriel, um, for Gelspar, he had sent he had sent you he had sent you along along with the blessing of Rook to this a to this area because a woman named Elise had approached you with a with the notion of a. Sanctuary in sanctuary in the sky that was hidden in this cl hidden in a cloud of miasma. Oh. the sa the um, the um, the main clue was um, was a message: sunlight and sky, repeated over and over. And. As you're as you're as you're approaching this this particular area, 
I'd like you all to I'd like you all to consider um what what made you want to go go along on this on this particular job because for all intents and purposes you guys are heroes of Gelspar. Well, who wants to start? <laughs> I just simply go wherever the wherever the spirits take me. Mm -hmm. I wanted to survive. If the city went down, I went down with it. And the city is where you keep all your stuff. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry about that. Honestly, I was just along for the ride. Mm -hmm. The only reason you, I even did this was because... Uh, what is it? Elise had called in a favor. Now I'm just along for the ride as well. Mm -hmm. And even... I just wanted to pop in for the sense of adventure. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the thing about adventure. Once you have a taste of it, you you always want to come back. That's facts. Oh. Sam leads back into her chair, and takes a swig of her beverage, and goes. Because I needed one last run. <laughs> I mean, you, you see my fingers, you see my scars. Mm. Yeah, sure, I'm still a pretty face, but <laughs> this kind of life, we, we all know the, the risks. Mm -hmm. And I've been chasing one dragon too many, too many times, with others in my party paying the price for it. And I saved a, a town again. For me, that's good enough. And, you know, shooting a big boat cannon out, out and wrecking a few people's days with it is always a highlight. You have no <laughs> idea how much how much catharsis that was seeing her seeing her get splatted like that, trust me. You don't have any idea how many times I've ran into so those assholes want to Get up, shove something up their ass. Little, <sighs> little factor. Um, they were there at, during the Everglades incident. Mm -hmm. As in the Everglades incident. Silverglades. Silverglades, yes. Silverglades. Yeah, Everglades. yeah, Florida, that Florida here, pal. Sorry. <laughs> Are we sure? No. It could be Florida in uh, the air. <laughs> <laughs> No, the sound Very of the true. silver glades Very makes true. me think it's Australia in the air. Because everything's out to kill you there. Mm. <laughs> Crikey, would you look at the size of that one? <laughs> uh, but it seems that Karma, ha uh, Karma has always decided to deal its blow. Spirits guide Karma to its fate. And it's always heavy on the backswing. <laughs> but with but with that with that in mind as you as you end up doing a bit a bit of digging f from what from what you were asked you do you do end up encountering a di a diary of a, of a woman named Marina spelled with two, spelled with two ends unusually enough who talks about talks about this hit this hidden sanctuary one that one that's one that was abandoned by the council quite a long time ago but also makes note of thi of things there that were chained that were in that were put in miasma and somehow sur somehow survived but changed 
including including a portrait of an owl, the the size of the size of a small child. It's terrifying to think of how long those legs are. Holy crap. If there's anything we've learned over the years, miasma has a lot of mysteries to it. Most likely this was just from an instance of them trying to understand it. There was also a description of of this of the same changes affecting um, different different types of bear resulting in resulting in bears that are one and a half times the size of grizzly bears mm. out of character do they wrestle now <laughs> <laughs> did they also turn white and move to Canada Boo! <laughs> I was just going for the basic Street Fighter joke. And I'm still booing you for that. Oh, wrestling bears. Should have gone for Tekken is dead. That's what I was just saying. Yeah, that sounds like I was thinking. Uh, yeah. Just. Bear. Well, if I'm going to go that far, I should have said, don't tell Brian Danielson. <laughs> I, was that, I was thinking that too. <laughs> I, I was just thinking because of one of Zangief's endings. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that. Yeah. But as you, as you do approach, you do hear the so you do hear the sounds of rumbling, as if as if there's something else in this little sanctuary that you guys have discovered that is de it is definitely giving the idea that it is not unoccupied. And as you reach the as you reach the um, what should have been, what should be the main area of, of this going up going up several um, flights of steps, you end you end up coming across you end up coming across a menagerie of be of bears and stags, both of the, all of them looking significantly larger and more vicious. And also more mutated than their normal counterparts. What could have happened to these creatures? Other than by the spirits, what kind of abominations are these? Well, you're you guys are about to you guys are about to find out. Just as you say, what kind of abominations are these? I say, uh, the kind that apparently need exterminating. All right. One last ride for these fuckers. <sighs> you gotta exterminate some things anyway. Hey. Well, that, ladies, well, that, and, ladies and gentlemen, it's clear by what we're seeing on screen. It's, it's combat time. time! I think that has a good shot on board. So, I am not liking the red bar. I see. So who? So um, who is taking slot A? I'll take B. I'll take A. All right. So Gumda, what do you got? Let's so so for uh, this bugger, I'm going to use throwing knives. So, and since it's a, even though it's a slow action, it's my the first basic range action of each round is a fast action, so it'll count as a fat. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, ping which one you're targeting. The one directly, the one in row with Sam. 
right there. I knew it. Following that, he's going to, let's see. I'm trying to get the whole map on screen. There we go. I'm going to shift here. And... <laughs> Let's go with... Basic melee with axe and dagger. And that is a whiff. Ouch. <sighs> but... Nope, never, never mind. Damn, I can barely see the grid. And obviously, the sp the spots in be the spots in between the stones that is um, that that is varying degrees of, of water, obviously, and the what looks like cracks. Those are supposed to be um, pathways. Um, no, those are tr the cracks that you see are trees. The stones in in the middle are um, pathways on the water. Oh, the oh, so these are trees. Pathway, blank mm -hmm. spaces, or water. Got it. Yep. Okay. Fun. I don't even... We don't even know how deep this shit is. Um. The shallow parts take two, take, um, two squares away from movement. The deeper parts take four. Oof. And if you're in deep water, you can't shift. Duly noted. Okay, so I take it this is the deep part right here? Yep. Okay. Hey, okay, you're up. Oh, my apologies. I was setting the uh, music up. Mm -hmm. That's fine. All right, I'm not moving. But what I am going to do, because I'm pretty sure I counted out the right amount of spots, this guy should be within range of me. Yep. Sir. Let's see. But I am going to make... Actually, no, I take that back. I am going to shift one square forward. And I'm going to use Gale Force. Which makes that a fast action. Mm-hmm. Actually, before I use Gale Force, I'm going to use Overdraw. Then Gale Force. On... This guy right here. And that's a fucking whiff. Unless you want, unless you can save it with your spark. I'm not sparking yet. I might need it. So, I believe that's going to end my turn. Mm-hmm. Wait, no. Uh, shift is a fast. Overdraw was a fast. Gale Force, because I shifted, was fast. I have one more shot. And when I tell you about timing, I'll be right back. <laughs> so, you know what? 
I'm going to use uh, Farsight Shot. All right. Oh, there we go. And actually... I need to get rid... I need to get rid of... that because I ended up making a bit of a mistake. So... And technically, that's 24 damage because you still did overdraw. Draw, yep. You still did overdraw and farsight shot, so that is one, two. Let me do, let me do this. Three, six, nine. Uh, my last damage dealing action was not a melee action. All right. All right, never mind. So you're just doing minus 24. Yep. All right. Let's see. And now for the this the cubs, which I know I know some of you are think some of you are thinking, oh, oh, they're just they're just cubs. They look that they look cute. They're, still they're, all, they're all baby trinkets. <laughs> By the way, I'm back. Welcome back. All right. Move. One, two, three, and he's going. And the first cub is going to swipe at Gomda, so Gomda, roll dodge. Okay, dodge. Mm hmm. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, that's a miss. On my part, or the cub's part? On your part. Yep, you're taking the hit. I feel him. Ooh, ooh. Ow. Seven versus. Feeling hurt. hurt. That's... Twenty-seven versus your bit. Versus uh, your toughness. Yeah, I'm doing it right now. That, was... that hurt. Only one. All right. Let's see. So now I ro now for the neck for the next one. Right. One, two, three. And unfortunately, that's all he can move because he's underwater. Or not underwater, he's in the water. That's two, that's two movement. And then again. One, two, three. Got one more cub. And it looks like he's rearing back as if he's preparing to charge, but he's not doing anything further than that. 
So that's gonna t that's going to take the grunt phase. Now for s slot C. I'll I will take, I'll take it. I'll take, oh, I'll take D. D. Okay, you take D. I'll take C. Okay. Uh, is it is it doggy? Uh, the puppy, the cub, right in front of me that seems to want to attack me. He mm -hmm. doesn't want to do that. Like I said, he does not want to do that. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Damn. Damn. Uh, uh, so that that gets rid of his bear. That gets rid of his barrier, and that's still twelve damage. Well, then I guess I'm going to have to do it again. <laughs> How do you want to do this? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Naf. I uh, look at him and go, down, doggy! And well, he goes down. <laughs> and I'm still left with two more, uh, two more fast actions. Mm -hmm. So the... Uh, Awakened guy that's directly in front of me. He's the next target. Mm -hmm. I think he's going down too. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Minus 18 and minus 21. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> oh. Just barely <laughs> survives. Oh. Oh. Yep, I can see that. Well, he knows now not to mess with me. Yeah, but th but that is your action. So. Um, John, I believe you said you were going to take slot D. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. What have you got for me? Well, first things, well, first, things first, you all noticed you all that, notice the that the eye in the center, in the center of, my, of my, my, face covering my face covering starts to glow. Starts to glow. And all of a sudden, the spirits, spirits swirl, around swirl around me. me. And when they dissipate, and when they dissipate I'm, now, I'm now somewhat translucent, translucent as I enter my, enter my hollow form. I didn't know you were a character out of Bleach. No, 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 no. Uh, no, no, this isn't Bleach. I saw this in uh, Indiana Jones. <laughs> he opened the Ark of the Covenant. God damn it. Just for those, Just for those who want to know, know what this is about. Yep, I'm ass and I'm assuming you're not using the amp effect. I don't see I why, don't I, see why I need to, okay. since I have no... Uh, no conditions to remove. Mm -hmm. And since that's all, that can be a slow, uh, or, be a slow fast or fast action, action I'm, going I'm going to shift one, shift one to put me right next. Right next. Right there. Right there. And since I can and tell since this, guy tell this guy is not going to last any long, much longer, since, since, since I know the other guy's going to be taken care of, I'm just in range of this motherfucker. Yeah. Got it. Come on. Come on. There it goes. There it goes. Thank you. <laughs> and once again, and once you, again see you see me reach. You see me hold out my hand with the beads, and a swirl, and a swirl of souls of souls begins, begins, uh, begins to spin around it, it gathering, stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger until it finally is unleashed with clamoring with souls. souls. Oh come the fuck oh, come on! Come on! I say sideways to him, go home, souls, you're drunk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't this guy dead? Because. No. Uh. 
then yeah, you then said, how do you, you, said, do, how do, you want to do this? I thought that meant he was dead. You're right. I was. <laughs> I was. I, was, I had him. Cr I had it crosswired. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's the other it's one the across the way that's not dead yet. Mm -hmm. Monk, I know it's our. It's the thing here at the temple, but don't get into the good stuff too early. Don't tempt me. <laughs> Don't forget, we got a long night ahead of us. Well, that's all I well, can that's do. All I can that's, do. All that's all my moves. Mm -hmm. Alright. So next is the Awakened. Meaning, the st meaning it's time for the Stags. So let's roll for it. So that's a five. But no, but nobody's in range for in range for him, so we can't can't do that. And yeah, his his actions aren't aren't qualified. So on to the next one. All right, three. Can't do that, and can't, and can't do that. So now for the third one, who is, who is within range. So actually, actually, I just realized both of them, are, both of them are. So first one is going to fire at Cervantes, and you see, you see the stag look in its direction and. Appear to appear to fire a bolt of energy from its horns. So, Coops, is that, roll is that dodge. The one, is that hold on? Is that the one that is in front of me? Yes. Coops, you get a plus two because of uh, threads of fate. Whenever I hit a foe with a hex spell, I may alter the next dice roll of any combatant that interacts with plus two as a free action. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right. Made it anyway. Nice. Now I needed right. need it. <laughs> that's a, that's yeah. a miss. Now the second one is going to try for Spirit Strike, and it is going to aim at Kaede. So, Kaede, roll dodge. Coming right up. Uh, let's get to the right window. Let's see. Dodge, dodge, dodge. There's dodge. Woo! Roll a six. Yep. That's a, it. Ma it managed to miss. So, then the third one is going to is going to fire at Gomda with its with its particular strike. So, dodge here, come. <laughs> <laughs> anything else it's doing but it is doing one more basic attack so oh so gomda roll again <laughs> gomda's just dancing around <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> remember he gomda has remembered the four d's <laughs> <laughs> don't be there Oh, I know the dodge, dodge, dodge duck. Five actually, it's five Bs. Dodge, dodge, dodge dip, duck, dip, 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 dive, and dodge. Yep. I thought the last one was dance. <laughs> For you, <guys. laughs> So with that too, I think he is dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Next is slot E. I'll take E. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna step up a few spaces about right here. And then I am gonna go ahead and hit hit this bum ass motherfucker right here with the bow. Very nice. All right. 
and that's that is piercing. So, um, could you ping which which one it was? This one. Remember, hold it. Hold down the uh, click and hold for a second to ping it. Yeah, so he's doing uh, the one at the very going. top. The one right All by right. him. And that's fifteen that goes straight into Alright. That's two AP on your on your end. Uh I think I'll just shoot another arrow at it. That appears. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> so. so that gets rid that gets rid of its shield. And that's nine damage total. Alright, so that's it that's it for you, Cervantes. So slot F. Who's got slot F? goes to Rick, if I'm not mistaken. No, that's Sam. Rick and me, actually, yeah. Oh, no, that's oh, no, Sam, yeah. Sam, yeah. So, Matty, you go. So, Matty, you go. Yeah, because I did a... That's right, that's right. All right, so, Sam, what do you, what have you got for me? Well, I see, uh, let's see here. Let me, okay, okay, here I am. Okay. I'm assuming that's gone now? Yep. Yep. Let me take care of that prick on your, uh, on your right there. Or at the bottom on yourself. Thank mm -hmm. you. So I'm going to move up to here. And uh, I am going to Yeah, I'm going to bone shatter below it. <laughs> All right. Cuz there's no kill quite like overkill and this is my last game today. All right, I'm I'm saying fuck it. <laughs> bone saw is ready. Yes, sir, bone saw is ready. 3 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I got three you for three minutes. minutes. Three minutes of playtime. Ah, it's gonna be a mess, though. Try aiming a little lower next time, Sam. Um, you gonna you gonna spark it? This early? So what's your accuracy? And let this might be. Let me. My accuracy um, is thirteen. This is this is a case. This is this is a case where we have a bit of a weird situation with the um, with with how with how roll twenty calculates these kind of dice, because yeah. you rolled fourteen, that's penetration. Yeah. So. Roll for roll um. Since you're using the sword, roll 5d6 plus 6. And... and How do I, I add the plus 6, by the way? I forgot. Oh. Um, just slash so that's R5. Obviously that's not a stack. Yep. Um, just sl write in... Sl write in... Um, slash R... Yeah, Gareth has it. Slash R space 5d6 plus 6. And then put in plus 14 because bone shatter blow. No. With the space <laughs> and without the uh, minus at the front. Where is the space? Just right after the L. Basically, start at the slash, not before. Like this? Yep. Oh, there, there, you go. Go. there you go. Much better. No! So that's 19 plus um, 14. 36. 
Yep. Yep. Damn, if I had rolled a 20. So that goes right through its barrier. And... So, not taken, not taken out, but <laughs> but you de you definitely managed. You definitely got a solid um, chunk in the your sword. Definitely, definitely, definitely got metal. Mm -hmm. Dude, that's so metal. And you could that, metal. It, that is you still have two AP left. Uh, let's see. I'm just gonna swing the sword at it. I think this time. All right. Oh, come on. Yeah, that's a whiff. One more. That Ooh, is not a whiff. <laughs> Anti-whiff. That's not a whiff. That's, a whiff. that's a dead. And then some. My twenty-seven over. <laughs> Come on, Monk, you know what that is. Yep. How do you want to do this? The first swing, she she Sam swings first time, misses. God fucking damn it. Second one. Fuck! And she just goes straight down to uh, on his head, like right there. One that jumps back a little bit. Hey, watch it! Flash zone. <laughs> 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 Oh, I'm sorry. Am I? Am I try? Am I supposed to leave you to die? But uh, yeah, that is one, that is one little bear with um no head or a body because it's probably caved in by now. Bad bear. Bad. No and, biscuit. Mm -hmm. And with that, we move to the. Elite tier, so the bit, so the big old bear that's been si that's been sitting in the back is it's t it's time for it's time for his move. Someone's All been right. eating his porridge. Let's see one, two. I don't know. Three. Can't do basic attack. Let's see. No targets, so then move seven. And that's all it can do. So we are back at we are back at the top of the turn order. So go who's with... got slot A? I, I'll take A. I'll take B. Okay. So I can hit this one, but I'm going to hit the one in front of me first. This guy. Good call. Oh, yeah. Take him out, I'm guessing. Yes. Uh, uh, now I, I'm gonna fun. say I'm gonna say hold off on the how how do you want to play it until we take out the other one. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> I'm pretty sure so I'm I... it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Dinner is a doornail. That is what you get. Yeah. So, it 19 took, piercing. 19, 19, and 20 piercing on the third one, on the other one. Yep. So they're both dead, I'm guessing? Yeah, and one of them is, one of them is at minus 37. Oh, good. So, <laughs> uh, at, taking the mode, I go, you get a hex, and you get a hex, and you get another one, and another one. <laughs> All right, belly acres in a row. The entire while as you're casting it, Gomda feels something goes by his hair. Goes by his hair. 
Uh, and thanks. Uh, great. So this, so he's going to be the Kaede of this one. Uh, you're going to be the the the, the, uh, the uh, Horus. No, no, no. He's referring to when I almost shot him last round. Oh yeah, for, <laughs> oh, yeah, for foreign. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I also saved your ass. Oh, I hey, she's Kaede saved my ass last game too, but she she also almost shish kebabbed me a couple times. Hey, you still love me. <laughs> True. <laughs> Anyway, my turn. Or do you have a, a That's more That's all of my points. <laughs> awesome. So I'm going to start with a tie turner. Going with Cole of the Week. So Gonda pounds on it. You see Gonda starts pounding on his chest before. <laughs> and leads a. The. Uh, and. Releases a yell of that of a hunter. A direct, and he is aiming directly at this bugger. So that guy's gone. If I'm reading this correctly, um, cold week. So one grunt becomes fallen. Or does that just get rid of the barrier? No, what the no um, that's a tr that is a trigger. You haven't that's a trigger based action. You haven't. Tr no, call the week. It says at the st at yeah, the start look, of your turn. Hang on, hang on a minute. I think um, I think r this isn't my botch. This is um, roll. This is the roll. This is roll twenty's botch. Okay. Yeah, I think it. Ar I, I think it artifacted. This, this happened before. Yep. Yeah, I remember, yeah, I remember we had that problem. So, yeah, one gr one grunt becomes fallen. So who? So, I which of the ones you, is going to get targeted? Okay, this one. Yep, that bugger. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna be putting a putting that on you to represent that you're sustaining. Oh yes. From and there. That is a slow action. Six. And following that I'm gonna move one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, one before right there. Mm hmm All right, that's your that's your action. So that would that would move us to slot B. I believe Neff said he was taking that one. No, I was B. Neff was A. Oh. Yeah. My bad. bad. So next is the grunts. Okay, two. So move five. One, two, three, four, five. No eligible targets for the ne for the next part of it. So now for the other one, that's a five. Uh, whoever's got that. One, two, three. I don't know who's got Somebody's something got... playing in the background, but I, we can hear it. Mm hmm. Sorry. And one, two, three. That's all he can move because of the terrain rule. And that's all of the grunts, so slot C is up next. I'll take it. I'll take it. All right. At this All point, right. At this point we got a lot of good enemies in range, got, but I've got I've got, one, I got the big boy right, right in front of me. So I'm gonna shift so I'm gonna one. Shift one put me in the water. Get a little slow, slow, slow with me. Then, then I think it's time I we, uh, make, this we uh, make this a little easier for ourselves. Time to turn 
turn time to turn the tide. Oh, no, wait. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna activate, I'm gonna activate sheltering, sheltering force. force. Let the spirits, Let the spirits protect, protect us and weaken our foes. Alright. Alright, so that's plus five. That is plus five to bit to barrier. So I believe that's going to be targeting Gareth, Kaede, and Kaede. No, that targets. No, that targets. All, it's all everybody. everybody. Mind the range. Oh, range oh, three. Range three. Oh, bad. My bad. Mm -hmm. no. No. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. okay. Well, that kind of, well, that kind of throws off my plan. Oh well. Oh well. <laughs> Still better safe than sorry. So yeah, you guys. So you guys get. Uh, you, guys get uh, you two get plus five to your defense to, to, to your barrier. Yay! Thank you. Yep. Woohoo! And you got three AP left. Uh, there's, not uh, there's not much else I can do in terms of fat fast, fast, fast actions to kind of. Nobody's taking damage. Nobody's taking damage. I can't heal anybody. <laughs> like the only one who has damage is me, and I'm too far out of your range. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, hold on. Actually, hold on. Actually, you're, Actually, just, you're in just in range. Yes. So. So. Okay, you want? Take, 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 take 21 health. Easy. I'm back to full health. <laughs> Woohoo! And now, again, once again, to, uh, time to uh, unleash, uh, unleash clamoring on souls guy. on the big guy. All right. Yes, yes more like it. Nicely done, darling. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice so, we a bad self. Not appears because of the, cause the hollow form. I believe that's still active. Mm -hmm. Doesn't say it's going yep. to turn. Says right Hang on, there's one small thing I need to check. Alright. So, you blew through its shield. And that's 16 damage. And I believe you were slot C. Yep. Yep. All right. So now is slot D. Cervantes, Sam, do either of you want to take that one? I'll take it. All right. I'll, uh, I'll I'll need to be in range. I'm afraid. So I would need to move. I think right from here. So I want to say here. Would that work? Yeah. I'll allow it. Oh, I am get I'm because of the gap. I am go I I am having you having it that you decide instead of going around going around. You just decide to jump. So roll acrobatics. Alright, since you succeeded on that, and we're, we're able to leap, we're able to leap oh, and um, leap hey, frog over Gamba. <laughs> leap frog at tum and tumble. Oh. Your next attack. Cool here. Good. 
Uh, as soon as I land, it'll be like it, kind of like a superhero landing, like tumble on on one knee, mm -hmm. and I'll raise my crossbow. Yep. Um, if you're crossbow? doing crossbow, roll with make that roll with advantage. I would say like you land. Uh, that's one stack. Yep. Element of surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't do damage to his health, but it goes right through its shield. That makes it one point left, right? Correct. Yeah, fuck it, one more. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, go Sam! Um, how do you want to do this? First shot goes through it, through it is 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 armor, right? Fuck oh. it, it's so accurate it goes through the hole, <laughs> right through his head. Well, no, they're animals. So, oh, yeah, right through the mouth. Ooh. The, so it got it got injured. It went to roar, and as soon as its mouth opened, oh, dead. It ate a bolt. Part of it. Mm -hmm. Delicious part of it. These guys, it's natural balance breakfast. So now for Eat your Wheaties, kids. Yep. <laughs> now for the stag. Let's see, so that's a four. So it's go you see it launch two bolts. One towards um Sam and one towards Gomda. So both of you roll dodge. Mm. How much am I miss losing? Uh let's find out. And keep in mind, this is going to be up against. This is going to be up against your resistance. Oh, that's not too, oh, that's bad. Not too bad. Oh, I just lose six. That ain't bad. Could have been worse. You could have been killed dead. Mm -hmm. But that that's. That settles it for the oh for the awakened. So now we have slot E, which is going to be me. And I'll take off. All right. So Kaede, what do you got? All right. Uh, pull up my character sheet really quick. I've got too many windows open. Um, also going to use a tide turner. As soon as I... Oh, fuck. I'm not in range of anything. God damn it. Let's see. Hold on. Uh, it's... One, two, three, four, five, six... I'm gonna shift two. I'm gonna use Boundless Quiver. And shift uh, and go right into, uh, let's see, which one do I want to use? I'm going to use Gale Force. All right. Um... What two? What two <laughs> amp effects from Boundless Quiver are you applying? Uh, let's see. I'm going to inflict two stacks of vulnerability, and I'm going to do plus five damage. All right, so that's a total of twenty. So. You're hitting the thistle weave bear. 
This dude right here. Alright. So that's a total of 25 damage. And two stacks of weakness. So let me... So that's in. And now and that's it. That's it for your for your slot. So slot F. All right. <clears throat> what I'm going to do, I'm going to move to right here. And then let's see. I am going to use Frostfire on this guy right here. All right. Nineteen versus resistance. Um, ping it again. All right. So are you are you are you going to go with burning or are you going to um expend an a are you going to use the amp effect? Uh, I'm going to use the amp effect. All right, which so are you going to be expending a fast or slow action? Mm, let's see. Uh I'll expend a slow action. All right, so it's in so it gets one stack of burning and one stack of chill. Neat. And that chill, is dude. no. Oops. You may not have, you may not have any chill, but apparently this guy does. Yeah, exactly. I'm telling him to chill. <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone, chill. I was, I was waiting for that. <laughs> Ironic system recovered from a cold. <laughs> <laughs> I got a sore throat too, so there's that. Which is why my Randy Savage extra special today. All right, so that is that's one st one stack of burning, one stack of chill. That is going to be very in that is going to be very interesting next um, next round. Hey, it's the icy hot. Yep, like, it's... Todoroki. <laughs> <laughs> and since you expended a, a slow action to boost Frostfire, that is your turn. So next is the bear. Correct. Two, three. Give me a turn. A no el no eligible targets for that. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's see the and. Oris, it's going it's gonna to try and but it's going to try and um, body slam you, and uh, so I need you to I need you to roll willpower. Okay. okay. Fuck. Fuck. Oof. You gotta use, gotta use seltering force. I'm gonna probably that need that extra barrier. barrier. Oh. No, this isn't this isn't inflicting damage. You are knocked prone. Ah shit. ah shit. So you you can either take the prone or you can try and spark it. Give it up so 
Given I'm sitting right next to the big bad for this battle, I think I'm gonna go ahead and spark it. All right, is 11 under your willpower? Actually, 11 is my willpower. That counts. So you managed to you managed to get out of the way just as it just as it was about to put all of its weight on you and since you're that close you can see yeah that's one big bear. It's about to become a lot smaller. And for re for size reference I'd say about the size of a large truck. You said it's made out of easy death. One hit does not turn the uh, Super Bear into regular Mario Bear, okay? <laughs> That's why all four of them hit it. God damn it. But, let's see, that's it for its turn. So now we're at the top of the order, which means... First, th first things first. Oh. Um, Gonda, are you gonna- are you gonna be sustaining... Oh. Um, Call the week. Yes, I will sustain. All right, ping which grunt is being taken out. Before we begin, I want to know what's the status on this one right here. No damage. Okay. In that case, taking care of our barrier friend right there. All right, he is gone. Ah, oh. not yet. I'm not counting that rule, Gareth. Not quite yet. But yeah, as I accidentally sneezed and hit the mouse. Ah. Um, Kaede, are you sustaining Boundless Quiver? Yes. All right. And so that so so that means it that means it's that means the only sustained the only thing remaining is the is dealing with the stack of chill and bur and burning uh, so for this round that cub will skip its first action and is but as far as burning well here's here's where the fun comes because for each stack of burning you take 1d20 piercing damage <whistles> see he does reset his barrier or it's not as very his shield, so. And what? Why am I taking it off? It stay. It stays on there. So. That is il that is eleven damage. And and he's to, and that's going to be repeating every round. Ooh. Yeah, setting things on fire is nothing to mess with in this. In some games, Ooh. it might be oh oh, just one d six around. No, here it's one d twenty per stack. Dear gods, the next game is going to be so much fun. So, <laughs> who's got slot A? I'll do it. All right. Remember, I'll you take have, remember, you only have two AP because you, you because you sustained Cole the week. I'm aware. Crap! How many AP and... does that require for me? Same. I'm going to move going to, to I'm gonna move him right here. And I have weather so I need to do an endurance check and see if the 
Does do I need to do an endurance check to, because of the movement field for the water? Yes. Okay. Endurance. You pass, so you don't get affected by by the by the water. Excellent. And but since you moved, that is your turn. Yep. All right. So, Cervantes, you said you were taking slot B. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, since this guy is already on fire already, I'm gonna go ahead and break out the chains of calamity. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. You're putting them back on the chain, gang? Mm -hmm. So, actually, you can hit both You can hit both cubs that are nearby you. Yeah? Yeah, you can target one, yeah, to, three target one to three foes. Oh, bet. <laughs> well, <laughs> this guy here and this guy here. Yep. But since... So All right. I'm moving these up here so it doesn't get in the way. All right, that is so you've got two AP. You got two AP remaining. All right. Uh, let's see. Ah, what the heck? Ah, what the heck? More fire, raging inferno. <laughs> fire! 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 <laughs> Fire. Probably right. on these guys again. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's so. Let me see their. Let me see their barrier. Okay. So they So that's sixteen to one of them. And <laughs> well, with the other one, um, how do you want to do this? I literally just I literally just lift the bridge of my glasses up with both of my hands on fire and then just release it all into one big pillar of fire. So one of them's out. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them's scared shitless. Mm-hmm. And... Do you like original recipe or extra crispy? Yep. No, yes. No, 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 dude. If you're gonna say if you're gonna say that, you gotta say it right. How would you like, would you like your your cub? Original recipe or extra, or extra crispy? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but he still has to roll, and because of the fact that he has to <laughs> um, skip the first part of his action chain, um, he can't move. And he's not in and he's not in range to do any attacks, so he's so no turn for him. Nice. nice. <laughs> yeah, honey, you want to talk about nice? Look at this. Nice. <laughs> Monk, you're not allowed to see it. I pro I probably will in a week. So. The other one gets to two, three, three. That's all he can move because because of the terrain issue. So that's it for the grunts. So who's got slot C? I'll take. I'll take, I'll take, take slot C. I'll take D. I'll take D. <laughs> all right. I got a friend in front of me. I don't like that friend. <laughs> You want me to take care of said friend? Oh, don't worry. I have ways of taking care of friend. 
Because yeah, I thought I took C. Yeah, you you're getting C. Yeah. Nev, let Maddie have it. All right. Yeah, go. I work. see. I, I'm assuming I, I am in range of this motherfucker over here. For the crossbow. Uh, that's why I'm asking. Yep. Ah, uh, yeah. You've still, still a little bit to the left. Yep. You've still got two AP. Now you went too far to the right. You shot at it, but it seems like some sort of barrier just deflected it. For the love of God, Sam, don't be Cody Parkey. <laughs> Oh, oh, Coops, I had a Dave you for that. <laughs> and I will take that Dave with pride. <laughs> yeah, right, fuck but... it. I, if, if I move, I, I, that's my last AP, isn't it? Yeah. No, you yeah. you use you use your AP on both of those shots. Slows count is two. Ah. Uh... Coops, you say the Cody Park thing. I was just thinking. Oh my god, a wild Pidgeotto came and flew by. But. That's now, my who, turn then. I'm not going to move. I'm really. Yep. So fine who's here. got slot D? I'll take it. I'll take it. All right. Now, now, my plan didn't work out originally last time, time but given what we're dealing with right now, I'm not taking any chances. I'm activating another sheltering force. Good call. Good call. Especially since that'll put uh, extra weakness, four stacks of weakness on big boy there. Yep. Let me get the let me get that in. And that also will give barrier to everyone but everyone but go, uh, Sam, I think. Sam, I think. Mm hmm. All right, so you've got three AP remaining. Yep, for my yep, next for my one, next I'm gonna, one, I'm gonna go roll a knowledge check because I'm, I'm about, about to optimize, optimize the situation. situation. <laughs> All right. Yes, I can. Yes, I Boom. can. Boom. So that gives me, so that gives what, me six what six to my penetration, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yep. Combine that, Combine with, that everything with everything else. Yeah, this yeah, this is. This I'm gonna, gonna lose the chance of screwing this up. Because that clamoring, that clamoring souls, souls is, gonna, is gonna do some damage. Target the big guy. Oh yeah! yeah! Good going, oh, baby. baby. That's my honey. Yeah, that's oh, that is a lot of damage. But not enough, apparently. Holy crap! Well, I mean it's, well, I mean, it's an elite. I wasn't expecting, I wasn't expecting it to kill, kill it that quickly. I was mean, mm -hmm. surprised if I actually did it and one shot it. I already saw the how much it, HP it has. Yeah, it's going to be a while. But that is that's it for your turn. So now for the. Awakened tier. And that just leaves the the one remaining stag, which is going to be doing one basic one um one shot one shot of its spirit bolt against Sam and one against Gomda, so both of you roll dodge. Yeah. Fuck. Mm. All right, let's see. Let's see what. So that's sixteen minus your resistance, which is remember, resistance. and uh, which is minus eight. All right, so you only take eight damage. Oh wait, I got the wrong one. 
Yeah. There we go. I think that's forty nine, right? Yeah. Math math good. Mm -hmm. Math good. So And since that's the only one of that tier left, now it's slot E. I'll take that. Now, I think I'm going to do something a little different this time. Start off with... Uh, da -da -da. On the big bad in front of me. Actually, no. Forget it. That wouldn't have worked. It'd use up too much. We'll just hit it with everything we got. Going DACA again? Going DACA. Full DACA. Nice. nice. How, did, how did Sam become so feared among the criminal underworld? Simple. DACA. Sam, so, not Sam. Or it's not Sam. 26. Yeah. 16. One of them missed. Good. 59 damage. Yep. Not bad. And uh, if it attacks anybody, uh, their defenses, they get a plus two bonus, just for reference. Mm hmm. <laughs> Cool. Duly noted. I call it. Right. Right. So, I so I believe next we have slot F, which is probably going to be me because I'm last up. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to shoot for this guy one more time. Even though I know he's right here, but I don't want to bring attention to myself. All right. So I'm down two AP I as think I've got enough attention for both of us. <laughs> I'm down 2 AP anyways, so let's see. It's too far to move. Uh, far sight shot. See what's your what's your um penetration? Pull it back up. <laughs> penetration is a seven. All right. Let's see. That's nineteen. Since since you do have um, boundless quiver active, which um amp effects from that are you going to apply? Let's see. The other one's already wore off, right? Uh, let's go um, plus five. No. All right, we're going to do plus five damage. And I'm going to inflict another two stacks of vulnerability. All right. Let's see, two, st two stacks of vulnerability and... And 24. Yep, 24. 24. So, 22 damage. And that's it for your for your turn. That's now it for, for me. Now for the bit. Now for the bear. Oh. It's a six. So he's not gonna. <sighs> he's he's not gonna move. So then we have. So. He's gonna try again with bot with his body slam. So Oris. <laughs> Roll willpower. And use that plus two, because you... Oh, you don't need to. Nope, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Mm. You will not, you will not fool me twice. Large one. Large one. So, then... Okay, that doesn't... That one doesn't apply. And... And 
that's it for... Actually, no, there's one final th thing. It is, go it is going to try and attack you with its, um, with its claws, so roll dodge. Two to that, so I can uh... actually put seven to that. Actually, put seven no, no, to that. No, 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 only two. Fuck, fuck. And that's with the two. That's with the two. That's with the two. Ouch. Have you already sparked? Yep. Yep. All right. Let's see. R Let's see what you get. Hang on a minute. Alright, alright, that's that's what that's Never mind. So So let's see what you get hit with. Twenty two versus toughness. Alright. Alright. Well, as I think I saw my bar my uh, barrier uh, edition up, so I'm only gonna be taking eleven. Here. All right. So we we are once again at the top. Mm, I'll go B. I'll go A. Before before that, um, Gumda. Kaede, are you sustaining? Yes. Correct. All right. So let me. This let me focus is the one I'm aiming at. Let me reset the. Let me reset the barriers. So. Um, the cub is still on fire, so that's going to be um, taken care of first. That's eight damage. Dusty. And because because of um because of the chains, that's an additional D twelve, so fifteen. And which one is gonna be targeted with Cole the Week? Alright, he's gone. Well, basically the one that hasn't been touched yet. Mm hmm All right now, oh, uh, now it's time. Now it's time for slot A. That would be I. So Kaede is gonna shift over here next to Gomda, and let's see. Do, 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 do. My window pulled back up. Double check something really quick. Question. Does this whole uh, thing count as one round, or is it each go around with the turn order? In far, in so far as Gale Force. Let me double check. Because if I use shift, if I use the shift action directly before Gale Force, Gale Force is a fast action. Because I'm sustaining, that's already minus two AP. You would have to, the action that you took that you took before Gale Force would have to be shift in order for that to. Um, yes, I count. did. I shifted. All right. In that case, the effects of Gale Force being a fast action that counts. All right, because it says once per round. But hey, noise. So, what amps are you going to put on that you got from Boundless Quiver? Uh, it's plus five. And if it's still not down, two stacks of poison. Die, 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 die. 
Alright, so... Let's see, this is still against the stag? This is still against this one right here, yes. So... I'm gonna kill this motherfucker, damn it! So that is... That is gonna mean you get... So that's twenty. That's twenty six. Oh my god! Just barely. Oopa! And that is your. I believe. I believe you were slot A. Yes. Yep. All right. And oh. I'll slot take B. Okay. Okay. Cause I'm, I only got one, and I'm going to use wildfire on the big bear. Mm -hmm. so. ah! No, no, I'm going to be using my charge. You <laughs> can. So use my spark. Mm-hmm. He's a charge in this wildfire. So that's <laughs> that's seven. Uh, that's it. that's a cap check of seven. Does okay. that? So does that hit? Act? Does that hit critical or penetration as well, or just accuracy? Cap check. Cap check. Uh, cap check. Seven four. Uh. Critical or accuracy? Yeah, does that hit any? Mm -hmm. Okay. My accuracy is 10 and critical is 3, so. Which penetration? Penetration, penetration 7. That's So that pierces then. Hey! Uh -oh. But I'm going to need you to roll damage manually. Okay, so that is. Slash R. Yeah. Sixty six. Yeah. Hopefully, it was right. Yeah. I think. Nope. Okay, what do I... What is it? Backslash R66? Not backslash, just regular slash. Yeah. Okay. And it's... And, um... It's piercing anyways, so... That's <laughs> 19... Da that's 19 damage. It's not enough to go through his shields, but it's... Something. Oh yeah, well I'm not gonna problem. Yeah. And oh. you've still got two AP remaining. No, I don't. Because I had, I had sustained cold the week. That, yep, fair point. So, and since Zan had pointed it out, let me also add, two, um, two stacks of poison. Thank you, Zan. Alright, so... Next is the one grunt remaining. Who will probably die soon. Spank it, Coop. <laughs> and... I would have it move, but it can't move. And I would have it attack, but there's nothing in me there's nothing in its range, so it can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> so next is slot C. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take T. Basically, if I don't, finish, if I don't finish up the big guy, him. he'll take him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, All right, so that's. By the way, the force, the way, the force that section we just still fly to, uh, to uh, the big bear. Yep. Which is 
why it was doing less damage. Okay, in that case, once again, I'm going to try to optimize. Nope, never mind. Nope, never mind. All right, fuck it. Climbing souls again. Just keep firing away. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck, no. Come on, let's finish this so we can watch pay per view. <laughs> so, gonna get gonna give you the. I'm going to, given the situation, Mulligan. All right, all right. <laughs> Everybody gets one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good Mulligan. I'm to regret that decision. <laughs> no. Well, if he didn't do it, I would have. So, okay, that goes right through his shields, and <laughs> fucking hell! Fucking hell! <laughs> the Crow Tommy, Tommy Lee Jones. Why won't you, you just die? Oh, I know. I just... <laughs> I've been trying okay, to kill sorry. that fucking stag. Uh, it's uh, on its last legs right now, right? Yeah, yep, so... Yeah. Gareth, you're up. And I'm going to make sure it dies. Uh, I'm going to start off... Now, it has a uh, stack of a, a condition on it right now, and it's sustained, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. How many unique conditions does it have on it currently? Let's see... Four, it has four stacks of weakness and the effects of wildfire, which won't take place, which won't activate until its next turn. So it's got two stacks on it. Okay. Uh, according to uh, this, uh, Woebringer, plus one die type, two hex spells per unique condition, and sustained effects on targeted foe is suffering. So therefore, my 48s become 40 12s. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to roll them manually at the end. Okay, so three hits, and that's going to be a total of 12d12. All right, let's see what we can... <laughs> <laughs> I think it's dead. And that's all piercing, by the way. Yep. Damn. Minus 77 after all of that. Uh, and I uh, look at it, and I point at my eyes, and I point at its eyes, and I say, I am the big bear now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I stopped, yeah, I stopped above, above for you. Yep. So... <laughs> That takes care of the, that takes care of the big one. So now for the stag, I can get rid of this. Okay, that's a four. So it it is going to try and do is going to try and do one at one attack at Kaede. And one at Sam. Both of you roll dodge. Do, 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 do. Jenna, your inner piccolos. Nice. Maddie, roll dodge. Maddie, roll dodge. Maddie? Uh oh, did we lose a Maddie? I didn't hear him drop. Or did real life kidnap him and take him somewhere? Not a clue. Maddie, como se va? My turn finally? No, we gotta, <laughs> no, we gotta roll dodge. <laughs> because you're being shot at. God damn it. And funny enough, it was the French that I spoke that summoned you. Wee oui, wee? Oui. 
Oh, I rolled better than last time. How about that? <laughs> yep. <laughs> but let's see. Because of the because of the fact that it has two stacks of poison. <laughs> <laughs> That's its last gasp. It's dead. <laughs> oh, you oh, killed, you it killed it there! Yay! In the most <laughs> underwhelming way possible. Wait, wait, wait. Very <laughs> anticlimactic. No, no, John, you gotta say that right. You killed the stag, dear. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Too sweet for that one, sir. So, slot E is next. Oops. I'll take it. Oops, you want to finish off that last again? grunt we got? I was going to say, if it doesn't, if it, if Goops doesn't kill it, I'll do it. Yeah, leave this one to me. Ah, Shiza. All right. Uh, you okay I over there, buddy? Going... I'm good, I'm good. This guy right here. That's half a year to die. Glacial crash. Um. Now, normally I would say that all that did was just break its barrier, but remember, chains is still in effect. Yep. So, roll d12. Why do I get this? Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. I fucking knew it. It's gonna be in a fucking sliver. You better fish the scoops, or I am. Oh, Jehorsis, I got this. I got this. The most fancy climactic meet way possible. Have a bow. Have an arrow to the face, sucker. Nice. Oh! That's minus 22. <laughs> and that's what not one but two cases of the most <laughs> of anticlimactic um, kills. And yeah, tech Zan, technically it should have taken at the start of turn, but I wanted to have a little bit of um fun, so you can just write it off as um as um dead man's trigger. But after go after going it after collecting yourselves, you end up you end up finding a few things. One, even though the place has been abandoned, the trees still have fr still have um he are still completely healthy, even ha even having um per even having purple looking a apples known as marlock fruit. Considering they were testing. Uh... Miasma down here on these things. I don't think I want to be trusting eating shit. Oh, no, but, but it does appear that the spirits have guarded this place well. The other thing you find on the owl's cage is a ribbon that seems to that seems to have the texture of steel, and unlike the rest of the place, the ribbon shows little to no wear at all. Hmm. You're battered, but but triumphant. You make your way up to the ga up to the gangplank of your ship and engage the drive crystal, lifting up from the pitted stones of this sky sanctuary 
a dangerously misnamed place and take off for the safety of the sky. As you drift through thick mm. miasma, barely able to see further than the bubble of uncorrupted air around your vessel, you at last break free into the sunlight and your lungs can breathe easier. Looking down, you examine the prize more closely. The Alrin steel ribbon is woven from countless tiny red threads, so small they almost appear to be a continuous whole. Its like has not been forged in quite some time. It's such a small thing to bring back in such a large and under otherwise empty cargo bay, and yet you still follow the instructions you were given and set it down in the small chest that was provided. When you return to the helm, looking first at the blighted sky sanctuary vanishing into the cloud banks below you, and then into the endless field of azure stretched out before you, you feel grateful once again to be sailing freely in a world of sunlight and sky. Mm -hmm. And I know, and that is that is where the story of the skies of Axia ends. Which I know this one was a bit was a bit briefer than normal, but that's the price when it comes to vignettes. But I think this is as good of a t as good of a time to go over our, go over our thoughts when it comes to when it comes when it comes to the when it comes to the experience of of Emberwind so far, since for ev for everybody but myself and the one person who's 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 not here yet, um, this is the, this is the first run of it. But before that, I think this is as good a time as any to take a break for a few minutes. Alrighty. We will see you in 10 All minutes, right. guys. Mm hmm. Alright. The mic is muted, guys, so you are all good. Mm. Eh? Um... Ah, it's me specifically, and I know why.
are back, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think all of us are back yet. Stall. Okay, head count. Slick Rick. K. Maddie. Nefinar. Oops. We're missing the monk. Yep, he, he, uh, he got into the sacramental wine again. <laughs> you know how he gets when he gets a break, he goes straight for the wine. I was joking so, at the, the top of the hour on this. God damn it. You should know better. Never tempt the gods of irony. We're talking about you, you realize this. Yes. Okay. Speak okay. the devil's Just name and thus he appears. <laughs> we're, back live. we're back live, by the way. <laughs> yeah, we're live, pal. Oh. Uh, are, we still, are we still... Are we done with Roll20 for the night? I believe, I believe so. I'm going to move it back to the landing because in the next... Come on. No, I didn't want to create a. <laughs> Technology, it loves to give us the middle finger. The you know, at the top of roll twenty, there is a there is a kind of um, fl there's a kind of player flag, you know, so I can so I can control what you what map you guys see. The new setup, the player flag on that is very anal. Like if I don't move it, if I don't put it right in center, it th it thinks that I didn't move it. Ew. Gotta love it. Mm -hmm. And I'm being uh, very, very facetious there. Yeah. But like I like I said, this is as good a time as any to reflect on. How th on how things have been going so far, because this marks the halfway point of the Emberwind campaign. Dude, I love and, this fucking game. Yeah, because I I had initially I had initially pitched this one because I felt it would be a a low a low bar, a low bar um e easy to get easy to get into thing for all of us since um. As far as GMing in this style, because GMing when I'm do when I'm doing things offline and on and for a show, are two different types of energy, and I've been out of that and I've been out of that for a few years, as mentioned in that video. Yep. Yep. But this also this also was a perfect fit for a particular goal that I have, and that is doing th show showcasing what else is out there. You know, you've got you've got so many people. I've been over the last year. I've been seeing a bunch of people talk about how they want to get away from the from the from D and D or or its derivatives, and then I see them playing Dungeon Crawl Classics or Old School Essentials. You know, games that are meant to be throwbacks to early D and D. It's like you didn't leave. You just put in, you just put a new coat of you just put lipstick on a pig. You're right. You know, it's. It's kind. Of, it's kind of like saying some. It's kind of like someone saying that they're d that they're done with military shooters after playing Medal of Honor too much, and then they go play Call of Duty. <laughs> like you didn't, you didn't leave. You just shift. You just shifted. That's not leaving. <laughs> Whereas, I think if somebody was go somebody went into this and all that they knew was the most ubiquitous role playing games, um. It would be a case of. Let me tell you something about your skills. As of today, they mean precisely dick. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, I think we experienced that pretty first, hand, pretty pretty strongly firsthand here. When a lot of the tactics we would normally use in other tabletop games didn't quite work the same here. Yeah. And i I'd, I'd say I'd say each I'd say each of you had at least one moment where. Um, a, a familiar tactic was not going to be as applicable here. Yeah, I could definitely think of a couple, especially from the first fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Once I got used to how the system worked, I was able to play with it a little better. But in 
at first it was like, wait, what? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I know. I, I I went into this thinking I was going to be a mix of a healer slash necromancer. I ended up just being more of a general spellcaster by the end. Yeah, that was like... An inadvertent tank. An inadvertent tank! Yeah, I was like, I was going in thinking, okay, a couple, a couple nature-based spells, maybe a, a bit of physical attack. No, it's mostly, okay, I'm going to get some good hits and then not do anything. As I just sustain everything for the druid. Yeah, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of its thing. It's, it's, the druids, it, the druid is intended to be something of a second liner. Now, gr granted, I granted I say that, but then again, there's there's the and there's the jobs that one one would one would think would be second liners, but ended up being front liners. Uh, I'd say the the only problem, the only major problem that I had was some was some of the um, die automation on roll twenty. Um, mm. Sam's character especially came comes to mind because the amount of penetration that Sam got exceeded accuracy. So there were rolls where roll twenty said that you missed when you shouldn't have. Yeah, it, it's that's, 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 that's the problem with any kind of VTT system is that. It, it, you have to, unless it's, unless it's catered to that game, shit like, that's shit like that's bound to happen. And unfortunately, most VTT systems are probably going to be catered around, well, D&D and, and most high-end, well most well-known games. You know, Warhammer, Warhammer probably, Pathfinder, Pathfinder, maybe, but you're not going to go too far beyond... Yeah, Savage World. You're not gonna go too far beyond the main stuff before shit gets shit gets wacky. And I don't mean to sound ungrateful because technically speaking, the the character sheet that we're using was not an official one. This was one of the many unofficial sheets that were done by fans. And hell, the the whole th the whole thing of con of conditions that was that was something that was added in midway through conditions and um a bit and a bit of the tracking stuff that was mid that was uh, midway through development if this ga if um we didn't have the um character sheet support i probably wouldn't have used emberwind for our first entry yeah yeah it's the thing, it's the thing kind of with any kind of made anything made by fans it's like, it's like using a fan made, made mod for a game you're going you're going you know you use it at your own risk it's mm -hmm. nice to have but there's no guarantee it's gonna be it's not gonna crash everything yeah it's a gamble and like any kind of gamble sometimes you lose your damn shoes <laughs> but I will I will admit that with some with some of with some of the archetypes when it came to the when it came to the encounters oh if there's one, if there's one thing that I did take issue with, it's, it's the, um, the damage spread across four tiers. Mm. Because one d ten plus ten damage is way too much against tier one uh, characters. Yes. Yeah, that was ridiculous. Yes. That first that fight. First fight yeah, you uh, Cylon there a little bit, honey. Yes, it's had. Sorry, I was loading. Mm -hmm. Still Cyloning a little bit. Because keep in for keep in mind, everybody, the starting HP is twenty five, and because we're doing the aspect system, unless you unless you are very selective with your aspects, um. You're not going to get much more of that out of the gate. The reason the reason Oris ended up getting so much so quickly was because of one of the aspects he picked. Which, which obviously was sheer, sheer dumb luck. I should not, not have been that tanky, tanky, but I just ended up being because I picked the right aspect. I wasn't trying to be back. I just ended up being back. No, this was this wasn't full Munchkin. 
Like, I have seen full munchkin. You didn't go that far. <laughs> and because I, I wasn't trying to. And well, and coming coming right in for for the, especially especially given what's coming. Welcoming, welcome to the cloister, Xanatrix Zadare. Hello. Hey, my, I get to be tagged out. <laughs> yep, tag time. Tag. So, this is a good. This is as good a time as any to bring up because of the schedule um, conflicts going forward for the second half. Uh, Maddie J will unfortunately not be joining us. I do, Maddie. I do appreciate that you set that you stuck it out as far as far as you did. And I, and of course, just appreciating the a, attempt because <laughs> when when Sh when Shauna when K when K bu when K um I won't say I won't say bullied but peer pressured me into hey, you, you could you could call a spade a spade, buddy. I practically bullied <laughs> you into this. I did I did warn you to. To be very careful what you've what you've unlocked. <laughs> Wait, she's opened she's open Pandora's box. box. Mm -hmm. But I I um I remember being unsure if if John if John and if Maddie would even would even be um oh would even be open to joining. I mean I I had a I had a feeling the itch might come back after. Though after those weeks doing those watch parties regarding um, critical role, but that's not but that's not exactly a guarantee. And I will admit, and I, will admit I was I was hesitant. I wasn't sure because it wasn't just the fact that I was hosting that was the only problem. One of the big problems is that in between because I'm not constantly engaged since I have to wait for everyone else to have their turn. There are often times where I'm just sitting there doing nothing bored out of my skull and for an ADHD kid like me getting bored like that can easily become a problem. Yeah. Oh. I think I think what certainly helps in this case is there's not really a initiative with em with Emberwind. Not in the traditional sense. That will be the case in future games, but this is an exception. I actually yeah. think that also kind of works well with like the flow of of it. it's like if you want to look at I think it was the second battle we had where because of my antics of ro trying of rodeoing a worm I ended up having <laughs> like <laughs> that was great <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. like at that time I had such a low health like I had very low health at at, at the end of it and I I had just had a like and I had just moved, but if we had an initiative system, I would have to wait through everyone to go back through and be, but since we weren't doing that, I was able to move and then we could instantly have John, John instantly be able to heal my character, which I think adds more into the way, different ways you could do each turn because you're able to adapt so well. Yeah, to the system. And it, it requires a lot of on-the-fly thinking. Mm -hmm. Especially since, and that something that I have, I have, I have applauded Derek when I when I've spoken with him is the fact that you have, you are expected to have a melee and a ranged weapon at all times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which yeah, means you which means you can, always you're always able, able, able to at least do, unless you're, unless you're, like, really you're like really out of range. Out of range. Odds are good if you're at least somewhat decently close to an enemy, you can do at least do something. Even if you can't do what you normally do, you can do something to, to keep your opponents uh, to weaken your opponents before you get into range to really deal the damage. Mm -hmm. And the I'd I would say that if there if there's any um. If there's any critique that that I have when it comes to the when it came to the encounters that we had, oddly it, oddly enough, it's that is that things are a little bit too open, which means a lot of the AOE type of effects aren't able to um, aren't able to be taken advantage of as as much as they sh as much as they should. I do th I do think if I was 
if I was do if I was doing things my way, I prob I probably would have shrunk shrunken down or confined some of the combat space. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. There was a lot of times I couldn't do many of my big my my AOE attacks like my Garden of Thorns because there wasn't enough enemies in range. So yeah, it wasn't really. I I, I, I probably could have gotten rid of that spell and not lost anything. I will, say, I will say one of the other mini critiques I have, and this is more. I think this is more on us, and it would be the game itself. Is that because of the initiative system we had? How often were we all fighting for positions when we were calling for slots? Yeah, I think all like, the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like uh, like I'm going to call out a few people. Myself and Lake were constantly trying to get the first two slots when we could. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know how many, I don't know how many I times I would call for a slot when right at the same right time, the same time <laughs> someone else would call right on top of me, and it's like, okay, now, okay, what, do now what do we do? Yeah. yeah like... Imagine my position. I could I could have been a dick and and have you flip a coin over it, or roll a you die. Know, so you probably should have. Like I was, I'm tempted to say it's like, okay, we at this is one of the times where it's like DMs should. Uh, DM's choice, but at the same time, also it's like, okay, what move are you guys going to do? Whichever has like the, when you both hear it, whoever has the best sounding one, you guys, that would be the one to choose. So, yeah, but yeah. um, the only the only reason I did I didn't is because just because a GM is supposed to act as referee doesn't mean I'm that kind of referee. What do I look like, Mike Kyoto? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Bryce Ramsberg. And the the big thing is, while you guys may have run into each other a few times trying to choose hero slots, you always worked it out amongst each other. Mm -hmm. That's the important part. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. It's why it's it's why it's a minor one. And again, it was more on us than it was Emberwind. I wouldn't blame Emberwind for that. It's just one of those things I had to point out. Something that we all need to learn for next time is make sure we plan things out ahead of time a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I think, like by the end of that second encounter, we were able, to, we were having that down well. It's just like we, I would say, someone need need to analyze the situation and then ask before we do something about that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, just, uh, sorry. Go ahead, Monk. Um, something I something I will something I will note is I do think. I on, this was this was the only time that I used the ve the veteran ver the veteran versions. Um, not too much not too much changed. Um, and truth be told, I didn't. When it comes to using the AI hexes, I didn't need to use them as that was a um, personal choice. Which, since you guys didn't see it, Zan, would could you give them a skinny as far as what I mean by the AI system with Emberwind? Sure. So. Every uh, NPC that is, that is combat capable in Emberwind has a track of actions that they can take that's suggested on their character block. Um, and they also have an attitude assigned to them that determines exactly how they'll attack whom at times. Some attitudes just make them attack randomly. Some attitudes make them focus on the first person to deal them damage in that turn. But the AI hexes are a track that they wrote that you saw whenever uh, monk was rolling for them that shows which actions they're going to take that turn and um there's some stuff that you guys have done that for example would knock out special action hexes at times so if you ever rolled those he couldn't use them but mm -hmm. the it's it's a way to make the game a lot less um choice heavy on the gm it gives them a way to streamline how they're going to have combatants enter combat. So it's actually ingenious. Be a good, yeah, I, I would say this is a good <laughs> game to use for a starter GM, for a GM who's first learning how to GM, so they could focus on that and then just focus on telling the story and not worry so much about having to deal with all the combat shit. Mm-hmm. Like I said, this is a, this is a very good entry game, and that and it was designed that way. Um went because i did because if you go back you will see an interview that i've done with derek on the game and it being beginner friendly is one of the things he brought up the uh, something else that i do find amusing just with my background zan and myself have heard long 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 diatribes about how mm -hmm. the fourth edition of the fourth edition of the world's most litigious role-playing game 
the game that I keep calling the addition I'm supposed to hate, but I don't because the check didn't clear. <laughs> Suppose if you if you listen to people who who talk on end who talk endlessly about it, they they act like it's the worst thing to happen to tabletop. It's it's worse than my frog. It's worse than fatal. It's wor it's worse than Senzar. Oh, obviously it's not worse than any of any of those. But I'm just going with the hyperbole. It's worse which, than Rahoa. Yeah, Ooh. which. If you know anything about about Fatal or Senza or, or Raho or, or, my, or my Frog, you know that that's not the case. No, nope. I will not run those. I won't even read those. <laughs> we still have to do you all a favor. We I'll still right have to back, do the, 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 the. I'm getting called. <laughs> we, we still have to do the dramatic reading of a, uh, uh, Sartan and uh, McKinnon's uh review at some point, Monk. Yeah, I've just been putting it off because that means going through some of the things in Fatal, and I really really don't want to well it's also such a long review that we'll probably be reciting it for three hours so yeah i don't know get get me in, get me enough alcohol i might consider it oh trust me i'll be drinking too <laughs> I, I imagine that jason sarton was drinking during that entire interview and since i'm taking his parts uh or that entire review so mm -hmm. but yeah for fourth is a fourth is is considered by many to be a terrible addition and the the what's what's the number one criticism we always hear, Monk? It's like That's, it's wow on paper. Yeah, and for as a, as a bit of a side, I am writing I am writing amusing where I'm where I'm going to be looking at that and t and taking it at face at face value ab about that, since I've always argued people who make that claim have no idea how MMOs work. Hmm. But and as, and as, as someone who's played, uh, I played four uh, fourth edition myself, uh, and. It wasn't like I I would never have gotten the wow vibe playing it. It just felt like playing a tabletop game. I mean, it was a little streamlined, but it wasn't like it was full on MMO style. Well, the other reason I don't take the claim seriously is I heard that exact same claim back in 2000 when it came to third edition mm. that it was turning D and D into Diablo, which is ironic. Um, get, but the point is, is that I keep finding games that have cited that edition that supposedly nobody liked and is the worst thing ever as inspiration. This and game is one, is of, one them. of them. Yep. Um, game, games like Strike or Unchained Heroes or mm -hmm. 13th Age, which, okay, that's a little unfair because it was made because um, Heinzo was involved with the development of 13th Age. It, um, it might be unfair, Monk, but 13th Age is a godsend of a game, so mentioning it is, necessary, is, is necessity. Yeah. Um, Mythic Space, which which I've which I've done an interview about, and the recently finished kickstarting for its print run, Gubat Banwa, and I'm pretty sure I butchered that because I don't speak Tagalog. Tagalog, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've got enough Philippine we've got enough Filipinos on the server as it is. Maybe Homer could correct us. I have can. I do plan on um, reviewing that reviewing that one day one day, and I have considered that asking if he can help me with pronunciation. But the I I always find it amusing that for for how supposedly bad it is, I keep finding people who were inspired by it. Hell, there was an entire um, game jam on itch called the called called the um. Called the five F, called the um four F game jam, which was all about games that were four E inspired. There were quite a few ga there were quite a few games in that game jam. I'm sure quite a few of those games uh, have become at least somewhat successful as well. Yeah the the four F tactical combat jam, and the, there's. There are there are entries that have that have more, but let's see. Twenty twenty four Assassination Street, which is its own nod to um, No More Heroes. <laughs> four el Four Elements Light, which is is a is an is a Final Fantasy nod. Um, Wormwood Weirdwood Wand, which is do which is doing wizardry and role playing. Um. Temples of the Infinite, which I have to read the description of this because it is so bonkers that I may consider giving it some more time. 
Dragon Ball Z meets Planescape by way of Quantum Leap. Oh, oh. I want to play this game. <laughs> How do we play you, this game, Monk? Uh, um, Monk, Monk, your idea intrigues me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> well. By the way, uh, we might want to take a second and uh, introduce our other player here. Yep. <laughs> I'm back. Um, and... Oh, hi, Ayn. Yeah. What's going on? For part two, Einbrecht will will also be joining us. And yes. Some of you may have may have seen him shit posting around around the place or uh, or on the server. And, and in a he's couple been... of geek watches. Mm hmm. Um. Pro probably probably mo probably more if I can if I can bully him enough. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm weird. We're all weird. What's your fucking point? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, I was about, about to say, to... welcome to the club. Yes, I was about no. to say, do you have any idea how little that narrows it down? It's true. <laughs> it's true. All of the above. Generally speaking, uh, from my experience, like people who really enjoy tabletop are usually fairly bizarre themselves. So it's, you know, it is what it is. We're all a bunch of giant children. That's why. You might be right about that. <laughs> We never lost our sense of childlike wonder, which makes us better than 90% of adults out there. We're sorry, <laughs> yep. but the uh, maturity you are trying to reach is no longer in service. Please hang up and try your call again. <laughs> yeah. Now, I'd, I, will, I will admit, when I, was, when I was setting things up, I had a fair bit of back and forth with, with Derek, because as some of you are aware, I try and write a primer. For gate for games that I'm running, and one part of that primer is including inspirational media. You know, non non, preferably non tabletop material that somebody can look up to kind of get a feel for what we're trying to go for. And I do remember I do remember bringing that up especially because I didn't when it came to the art, and I th I think I told you this, Kay. I didn't want to completely fall into the trappings of traditional fantasy art. Yep. Which is why I tried to go for a uh, mismatch of a different outfit. Mm-hmm. Because if you notice with Kaede's outfit, it's not necessarily a kimono top, but it has a look of almost like a Hawaiian print shirt. Yeah, which... And, is... uh... Sorry, go ahead. Which is de definitely, in, definitely in keeping with that. And then, of course, I have uh, Cervantes over there decked out in practically what it's a three-piece suit with a uh, cloak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you have Gonda, which is nothing but barrel fabrics. Well, refer you at you. I remember you specifically saying that I you know. had referenced Nightwolf. I know. Yeah, and I hope I uh, kept to that. Oh, you did. And the this is this is definitely important because within the, within the primer that I wrote, um, the. Some some of the entries in there were my own edition, and some of them were on the were on the suggestion from Derek. But let me, and I do I do have a set. I will have a second primer for the second half. But some of the inspirational medias is Malazan Book of the Fallen, which is actually a really good book series. I highly recommend to anybody. Um, Dark Souls. Tactics Ogre, Let Us Cling Together, Final Fantasy, and Dune. Because this is trying to go for more Magitech in terms of its fantasy instead of the traditional high fantasy affair. There's no there's nothing wrong with with what people consider high fantasy, but I've always told people that's a very limited way to view fantasy as a whole. It is. Uh, it I, really I is. 
I agree with that, and I was actually guilty of it in my youth. I hated uh, Dungeon Siege because I felt it was sort of a pretender to fantasy. We have matured and moved on. Correct. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I've told you guys how I remember how people were talking about Planescape being too weird for fantasy, and, and um, hell no, Planescape's was... unironically my favorite D and D setting. There's, there's a small part of me that wants to go, if you find that to be too weird, your head would probably explode if you read through Invisible Sun. I love Invisible Sun. I couldn't justify spending $500 yesterday to buy a black cube. Ooh. I'm actually not familiar with Invisible Sun. It's a, it's a cipher system setting, um, or it's based on the cipher system and is a setting from Monty Cook Games that is... For lack of a better word, weird eldritch fantasy. Oh, it describes itself analogy. as surrealist. Yes. Just, okay, I'll just I, I will just go grab the Invisible Sun link, um, and you can you can look at just the art alone on this on this website. You like you'll read it and you'll be like, oh yeah, that that makes absolute sense, but. <clears throat> You'll you'll read it, <laughs> and then it'll be even even more uh, surrealist. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna drop this in Cloyster here. Mm -hmm. And uh, let it be no surprise. While we're chatting, I'm actually working on the character art for uh, session zero for next week. Yep. <laughs> Which I. I ha I had half jokingly considered calling it session zero two. <laughs> hey, I'll this take isn't that. In the Franks. <laughs> mm, I didn't say yes. it. I didn't say it was. I know. I'll take a little zero two. <clears throat> so but, uh... phrasing not a thing. We're just not doing that anymore. Mm -hmm. Nope, not at all. Got to watch the final two seasons of that show. Yeah. So uh, we're we we were waiting. My friends and I were waiting for the uh, the last uh, season to finish, and then we we're going to watch season twelve and thirteen at the same time. Because why the hell not? I mean, it's, I'm shocked they made it to thirteen seasons, given how wildly ridiculous and offensive uh, the show often was. But I'm okay with that because. Frankly, not enough dark humor out there. Mm -hmm. I love now, Invisible Sun. Yeah, but th when I say surrealist, I'd, I'd, the art with Invisible Sun is very reminiscent of some of the surrealist works of, say, Dali, or or even or ju just a, just a lot of people who just didn't want to do realism during that during that period of time with art I mean the thi the thing that immediately came to mind when I saw it is is um the first time I saw the piece is known as the persistence of memory but with that with that in with that in mind I do think I do think the Emberwind experience is, is going so far so good. It's cert I'm certainly glad to be back in the particular saddle. Same. Mm. Oh, yeah. And next week we will be doing the session zero for the second half uh, known as the Song Weave Tapestry. It's th the title is still is still going to be under the um, sun is still going to be under the the tale of song and sky, uh, song and sky, uh, but I will note I will note a few a few things that I've I've told some of the other people here, but I want I want to make clear. One, uh, Zan has volunteered to utilize the cl the um, job that I homebrewed we not too long ago. Homebrewed. Yeah, that we, yeah, we went through all those freaking actions from fourth edition. Just to get them for the pugilist, monk. Fair, fair. The pugilist is my answer to the fact that one, I felt that the unarmed combatant archetype was not supported enough 
with the with the um key with the key eye series abilities that the shaman has. And two Oh. Um, the sh the shaman is monk adjacent, but not enough. Because it's got a share space with all the casty stuff. I wanted some I wanted something a little bit more martial. And the and thus the pugilist. I could have gone with martial artist, but all the other name, all the other things are two are um, one word names, so I wanted to keep to that. The of the the other thing to note with it is that we are going to be doing the attribute method with character creation, which is a little bit more involved. And because of some of the weirdness that was happening with the character creator on the website. We're just get, we're going to be going. We're just going to be using the roll twenty um setup straight. Instead instead of cutting the middleman, I'll st I'll still be using the character creator on the Emberwind website just for my own records, but that's as far as that's going to go. Yep. The uh, the other th the other thing to note is that for most of the, for. I am ex because of the fact that the six action limit doesn't really exist on the roll twenty um, sheet, because of how roll twenty does these things, we don't have to deal with that limitation. So there are so there are going to be uh, more actions per character. Ooh. And in fact, the the whole anchors and deadweights thing that's still that is still going to be applicable. The the uh, the um, but the other the other thing to note, and I believe I believe I did post up about it in uh in it. I just didn't um pin it, un unfortunately. Is the is the fact that you get you get everybody's gonna get um. Get six actions for, as normal, and three from your subclass if you have one. Otherwise, if no subclass, three more actions. Mm -hmm. And the sub the subclasses that you ha there aren't multiple subclasses yet, but I'd Im I'd imagine that's going to be expanded with some with some of them. Um. I remember going through them, and John, you had you had your moment when it came to the Elysian Legionnaire. <laughs> because you have because, my word, I already have an idea. Without spoiling my the design idea uh, I have, I promise you, I, without spoiling anything, I promise you, I will not be doing Thor. Yeah. Actually, should we go ahead and announce what classes we are playing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm gonna go from top to bottom, and and um, I want and I want each of you to. To, to tell me what you what you picked and why you went with that one. Don't tell me anything about the about character um, choices or art or anything like that. Just why you picked um, that class instead. And I sh I should note I did put a rule that y that nobody could pick the same class twice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let, me uh, let me go ahead and go first because I got to get going after this because the uh, pre-show for the AEW pay per view has already started. No matches right. have started yet, but I want to beat that to the punch. Fair enough. So yeah. So, so I'm basically. So, so I picked the war the the the, the, the uh, I believe it's the warrior class. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And of course with the subclass of the Legion the Legionnaire. Because because I wanted to, with this I wanted to kind of do the opposite of what I did with this current class. And kind of mix things All right, up. guys, I, like I have to, to go because I have to go supper. So thank you so much. I had to eat at the game and run, but I got a game and run. <laughs> All right, no bye, worries, Maddie. Maddie. See you in a bit. Bye, Matt. Good night, everybody. But, but I, wanted to do the I wanted to do the opposite of what I did this time. And I like I want to try to keep staying out of my comfort zone. I don't want to stay too comfortable with the same kind of class over and over again. I want to kind of keep switching these up and trying out new things. So I thought this would be a good way for me to, to, to change things up instead of going for a more spellcastery class. I went for a more straight melee class. Thought it'd be more fun. Mm-hmm. 
with that, I must I must depart as well. I have to go head over to the other channel, so I expect you guys to get a call here on the other end of the line here in a minute. Mm -hmm. but have a good night, everybody. Yeah, take care, right, John. Bye. -bye. <laughs> so, I'll start with you, Coops. In instead, you were do you did Ardent last time, and for the next one, you're going with Invoker. Um, what made you pick Invoker? Honestly, because it was kind of the same, almost the same as Ardent, just less explosions, less fire, but with a little more, with a little more of, a little more on the curse side, which I actually do like. I was reading the description. So I, I, that I was apologize like a good for that. For me. To uh, those in the stream, I should say, considering it's my Discord, that's uh... a. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But that's that's essentially my reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get to see now, those hexes in do, action, huh? I... Oh yeah, and they were they were delicious. <laughs> but now I must head out because I got called to dox it. All right, All stay right. frosty, man. Feel better, Coops. Yeah, Thanks. feel better Catch and have a later. good dog time. Roger. Mm -hmm. Oh, and with that, that is one more piece down for the count. Huzzah! And speaking of which, hi. Um, Kay, you you went from archer to now doing Atalanta with the savior subclass. Yep. I figured instead of going for bows, as everybody knows me to do, and do the sneaky sneaky thing, I'll do a in your face sort of roll. Mm-hmm. And besides, I think Rick beat me to... Uh... No, 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 I chose Atalanta well before everybody else said. Yep. Yeah, and uh, apologies if you hear John in the background. No worries. And since you, since you added... It's gonna, that's going to be an interesting beast because the Atalanta is... A is something of a front, something of a frontline commander. Zan, I, th I think we had made analogies to, like, b to bards and paladins, back when we were doing the valley on Emberwind. I think we did make some allusion to that, but we also said that it, it seemed like it was it was more than just those things. Um, almost like a a scald in ways. Mm hmm. Which. Is one of the inspirations for for bards, and it and it also means that somebody can do that kind of thing without having to worry about a damn instrument or singing. Yeah. Sorry, that's just a pet peeve of mine with how people view bards as if as if everybody's supposed to do the troubadour thing. Oh shit! I forgot about the sigil. God damn it. Ah. <sighs> uh. And. Let's see. Neff, you went or Neff you, and Rick, yeah. Yeah, Neff, you went with the Ardent, and with good timing because as we we're developing, the Firebrand subclass came out, so I made sure to grab that, which immediately grabbed my attention because I figured normally I tend to go melee or at the very least a physical fighter like Rangers and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and I wanted to go completely, totally balls to the wall Fire Mage. And as soon as the firebrand came out, I looked at that and went, yes. A thousand times, yes. And I made the joke of, hey, we heard you like burning things, so we put fire in your fire so you can burn while you burn. <laughs> <laughs> and I fully intend to do such. Yep. And Rick, you went with Rogue with the Nightshade subclass. Like, at the, at the top... While we were developing the characters for the first one, I knew I wanted to do either Ardent or Rogue, but because Neff had already gotten Ardent, I was like, okay, I'll do Rogue. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, like I afterwards, I went and watched your guys' review of the class, and it was it's similar to how I was thinking about playing, basically, almost being a quote unquote. The troll slash, if possible, being the kill stealer. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Well, also at the same time, if I can get to, if one of these guys are willing to work with me a little bit, having shenan be able to make shenanigans at the same time annoy yet entertain everybody. <laughs> I got a couple of plans. Yeah, and of course, of course, um, our, of course, our newcomers Ein Einbrecht and Zan have have their classes picked. Einbrecht is going with tactician. Remember, folks, it's not cheating if you did the math. And Zan is going with pugilist. Yeah. Um, of special note, I originally wasn't going to be joining session two. There was another person who. Due to some unfortunate behavioral issues, uh, was they unwelcomed themselves, and then we retroactively unwelcomed them before that. Um, at that point, Monk was down a player, uh, and hunting for more players I, th I felt was just going to just be stupid, and I wanted to get invo involved with Cloyster at some point anyway because of things, not only because of Emberwind, because I love Emberwind, but beyond Emberwind as well. Um, mm -hmm. So I was like, oh yeah, sure, let's do this. And the reason I picked Pugilist, not only because we, we both built the class and we needed to play test it, but also because these two assholes, Rick and Ein, stole one of the of, of the classes I wanted to play. <laughs> 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 yeah, dicks. But it's okay, because now I get to be the trolliest troll that ever did troll, considering all the shit we threw in the class, monk. <laughs> All I have to say to you, my good sir, is let me here. I have a thumb to bite at thee. Go ahead and bite <laughs> your thumb. I, I'm sure it'll help you when you're crashing through as many walls as I'll throw you at. <laughs> hey. oh, I'm sorry. Did you did you not want piercing damage? Here you go. <laughs> yeah, and I I am I'm going to be adjusting that because having had some time to see how da how damage resistance is is, is going to work. Um. The that whole that whole keeps I'm having it that um, wall damage is piercing by default and with that keepsake it is um it Auto is max. Crit. Auto crit? And I'm choosing this the rampart scroll? Are you kidding me, monk? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh man, how many things how many ways can I melt a mob? Let me count them. Well, there's a wall there, and a wall there, and a wall there, and a wall there, and a wall there. Can I just throw them at the ceiling, too? Yeah. Wait, um, are you telling me you're going to be breaking the fourth wall, too? I mean, don't I already do that? <laughs> yeah, but I think you should... Would you mind giving a bit of context when it comes to the whole wall banging thing and why we... Why that was something we decided to add in? So... The pugilist abilities have a lot of enemy shifting. And we saw in Emberwind that when you shift an enemy a certain direction, if they encounter any sort of encumbrance, they just stop flat. Uh, we knew that in other TTRPGs, not just the most litigious, but plenty of other TTRPGs, when forced movement occurs and something encounters an obstacle, it takes damage. And so we thought that initially because it's not an actual base rule in Emberwind this would be a cool optional rule to put on top of the pugilist so that the shifting of movement has more than just repositioning value but also actual damage value because some of the moves don't do anything but reposition and having no damage on top of that would kind of feel like a waste to some people not to everybody but to some people and we wanted to make sure that the class fantasy was fulfilled so we were just like yeah okay um, optional rule. If something hits a wall when you when you shift its movement, uh, it takes damage. For any squares, it would have traveled but didn't. D6 per square. Yep. Just uh, just and then and then on top of that, we're like, well, how do we make this more special? Keepsake, rampart scroll. All of your damage from wall banging is piercing. But now Monk is going, no, all wall, all, all wall, all wall being damage is piercing and uh, Rampart Scroll, all wall damage is auto crit. Yeah, I the, love that idea. The reason why I decided to do that is because of how resistances work. Yes. Oh. And of, of course, it's still, tar it, this damage is still targeting toughness. I haven't found a way to justify it targeting res um, resistance. 
I mean, I'm sure there's I'm sure there's a way to do it. I just haven't fit. I just haven't found it yet. Yeah, it it, it probably takes a, some lots of playtesting to be honest. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing how it gets played in uh, or I'm looking forward to seeing how Zan plays his character. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's the one other thing I need to mention to everybody. You all know me if you've if you've watched any of thing anything that I've uh, co-hosted with the monk before. I am the bane of his fucking existence. <laughs> and as being I've witnessed part of the this bane... in person, so <laughs> as being part of the bane of his fucking existence, uh, I have to do a little trolling. Um, <laughs> no matter which class I was going to pick, I had a way to troll the monk. Uh, and when he told me pugilist, I was like, this is perfect. And then I immediately started, started cons uh, conspiring with Lady K here. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I've been made in, uh, I've been made the accomplice to this. Like you an weren't already. An, an accessory as well. You're both. Yeah. Char my character design is fantastic. My character is fantastic. And, uh. Well, that's all I'm going to tell anyone until next session. Yeah, I I made it explicitly clear to 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 K and and to everybody else that to discuss among themselves regarding concepts, I want to know as little as possible. The only the only exceptions were the times where Coops asked asked me if if asked me if a certain image would fit Emberwind because for his first character he originally was going to have it look something like the um the black, black mage from not just any black mage but the OG black mage from the original Final Fantasy and I told him that is not the best idea although I can yeah. certainly see I could certainly see making a design based off of that that might work yeah, it I, it would have been too wizardy though. Yes. And the he was playing an ardent and in the the description of the ardent it says it wants it says it was born out of wanting to move away from the wizard in robes and is in with surrounded by dusty tomes kind of thing. Yes. And so, uh, with 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 Neff's design I like to think I nailed that. Mhm. Mm yeah, you kind of did. Oh yeah, you did. I saw I saw Neff's design because. Uh... Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Side note, um, we we have helped uh, Lady K with a few art direction issues. Um, Thankfully, yeah. I specifically. Yeah, they uh, helped me uh, with a certain thing I was having issues with with Einbrecht's tactician, but it turned out amazing. Yes, it looks very good. I'm just happy that I could help. I have mm -hmm. no actual art chops to speak of, but when it comes to other things that can tie into art chops, I, I could definitely grant as much help as possible. Yeah. And obviously, for for some campaigns in the future, this particular hands-off um, approach that, I've, that I'm taking with visual design isn't going to be as applicable. Um, just as an example, if down the road we we run a 40k campaign, um, in Oof. that kind of situation, or in that kind of situation, I'd have to step in. Mm. Not, not, not as any, not as any sort of knock on you as an artist. I'm not going to. Oh no, 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 no. I, I know, I know exactly what you're getting at, and because I can admit full stop, one of my biggest weaknesses is drawing armor. It's not necessarily the armor thing that's the reason why. It has to do with the fact that. Warhammer 40k in general and the Imperium specifically, because I'm not having you play as filthy Xenos, has a very distinct and very consistent visual style with types of characters. Mm. Like if you, if, I'm, if we're running Death Watch and I'm having you all playing as diff, as different chapters of Space Marines, there's a certain way a Space Marine is going to look. Yeah, you get what get I'm saying? Wrong. Yeah, I, I get I exactly some... what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. I love me some Tau uh, battle suits, but they are still filthy Xenos. They're also fucking <laughs> commies. 
Yeah, yeah, that too. And they sterilize humans. Mm -hmm. But and and it's not just limited to some to something like 40k, but any any game where there is a very dis a very distinct and very specific visual identity. Hell, if we if we run um, L5R again, I know I'm gonna have to get involved in that kind of situation. Absolutely. Yeah, especially where the swords are concerned. Because one, once again, whenever I'm working with an artist, I end up giving sword lessons. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, legit, I have learned more about swords in the last 10 years of uh, knowing the monk than I knew going into any sort of tabletop. I mean, you did just learn the other night what a fuller was. That's very true. <laughs> I always thought yeah, it was called a full crumb. Unironically, <laughs> these two are the only reason I know the difference. Uh, the differences between uh, various sabers. <laughs> I yeah. do too, but it's a different type he, of saber. He says as I look at my giant Dado uh, saber on the wall. And we all know that Rick is a Rick is not talking about swords. <laughs> all right, Monk, we need to wrap this up. We are at uh, five minutes to seven. All right, all right. With with that said, as always, a sincere thanks to everyone for venturing all the all the way into into the temple. We will be we will be back here in a week's time with the second session zero. But until then. On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>